The following episode of Dad vs. Daughter was made possible by a contribution from Asthma Day. Hello and welcome to another episode of Dad vs. Daughter. I'm Tim the Dad, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Discoveries, the journals of Lewis and Clark. Now this is from Ludonaut, and this is a game that has a dice worker placement, it's got some set collection, um, it's really cool. I, this is one of the games that I love to play during the fall every year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a high-level overview on how the game is played, and then I'm going to tell you what I think, so check it out. To begin the game, each player is going to choose a member of the expedition, and you can see who we have here. Uh, basically, they're all the same. Uh, it's just who you're going to be and what color you're going to have. You're going to take the matching player board. You can see if I chose blue, Meriwether Lewis, I have the blue symbol there and I have his portrait. And then depending on the player count, that will determine which side of this card that you're going to use. Now, the way you're going to score points is by doing set collection. And you can see for each set that is uh, unique, you're going to get 3, 8, 15, or 24 points. And then whoever has the most TPs at the end of the game uh, is going to get 12, 8, 4, or if you're last place, you get 0. Uh, and this is a for a four-player game. Now, for a 2 or 3, we're going to flip that over. The points here are the same for the set collection, uh, but the TPs are only 12.6 and 0. Now we're going to place that card right there where we have a notch in our player board. Each player then, in turn order, is going to choose one of the cards that we have over here in the reconnaissance area. Now the first player is going to be able to pick a card. And let's say I'm the first player. I will pick this card and I will place it right there above my player board. A new card gets filled in and then the next player gets to choose from those three until everyone has a card. Each player is also going to take the dice of their color. There are five dice. These are nice, chunky wooden dice. And you can see they have different symbols on the die faces here. So we have a horseshoe, we have footprints, we have um, an American Indian, and we have a scribe A. And you've got five of those dice. Each player is then going to roll those dice, and then they are going to place those in this little cutout section on their player board. That's going to be their dice pool that they are going to use in order to uh, basically use those as worker placement. You'll notice, too, that as part of setup, we have three cards that are over here. Uh, these represent the American Indians. And I will point out that the rule book does kind of go out of their way to talk about the use of that term. Um, and you can see right here on the front of the rule book. This is about the term of the American Indians. I'll let you read that for yourself. You'll notice the other player colors we have, red, yellow, and white, but we also have 10 of these gray dice. Now, based on player count, that's going to determine how many of those 10 dice that you're going to use, but those are essentially neutral dice, and I'll talk about how you're going to get those in a minute. But those have the same die faces as your normal player dice. The last thing I want to talk about during setup is that these cards are double-sided. So you can see on one side we have mountains and rivers and kind of a little paths and such. Uh, we also have how many victory points if we're able to complete this uh, card. And on the back side we have the American Indian side. Uh, these are going to be mostly uh, benefits that you're going to get throughout the game. Sometimes they will also have placements. Uh, where you can assign your dice in, uh, in addition to also on your player board. Uh, but there is a symbol at the top here. The arrowhead represents a warring uh, faction or warring tribe of the American Indians, whereas the sunburst here represents a peaceful tribe. And speaking of these cards here, you'll notice that uh, some cards will have victory points, others will not. Uh, some cards will have TPs, others will not. Um, and some of those will have those symbols. So the reference card will tell you how many of each of those symbols are in the deck. And based on player count, you're going to remove X amount of cards. So while it does tell you how many of those 
uh, that are in the game, you have no idea really of knowing how many of those are going to be in the deck because since those uh, cards are double-sided, some of those cards may end up over here and you would never see those um, icons. On your turn, you are going to select one of the die faces that is on the dice in your pool. Now, you're going to be able to activate all of those dice or basically place them out. But you can only do those that are uh, of that particular symbol. So in this case, I have two horseshoes, I have an Indian head, I have a scribe, and I also have footprints. Now, let's say that I decide I want to use these horseshoes. I'm going to look and I can place those on my board where either I have a horseshoe symbol or I have the question mark symbol, which is a wild. You'll notice there are several of those. And once I use those, that is my turn. Those would be assigned uh, to my player board. Uh, I do want to point out that also on the player board, you may notice that there are arrows. And I'll use this player board here to show that. So this area here does not. This actually has one arrow. You'll see two arrows there, two arrows there, one arrow, one arrow, and one arrow there. What this means is for me to uh, place dice here, I have to place two of the footprints, but one of those has to be returned to the game board in the middle. And I'm going to talk about uh, how we're going to be doing that. If there are two of those, then in this case, we have two Indian heads that we have to place there. Both of those are going to be returned to the middle. This case here, we have three dice that we're going to be placing there, but two of those are going to be returned to the middle. Here's a good look at the main board. Now you'll notice that the board is divided by a river in the middle. On one river bank, we have the Indian heads and the scribe. And then on the other side, we have the footprints and the horseshoe. So whenever we place those dice on spaces where we have to send one to the uh, main board, you'll notice like when I stack the two footprints here, then I'm going to be looking at that die face, and that's the side of the river that I'm going to put that die on. So that would go there. This one would stay on the board. Again, like the uh, Indian head, after I take the action, that's going to go to that side of the board. Now in your turn, instead of actually placing dice, you can retrieve dice. Now you have several options. You can either take all the dice from one side of the river or the other, or you can take all of your dice back regardless of where they're at. So I could take all of these dice, then I'm going to re-roll them, and then all those are gonna go into my pool. Conversely, if I wanted, I could just take all of my dice back and re-roll them and they're gonna go back into my pool. Now, if any of the other players had any of my dice either in their pool or on the board, I would be able to get those back as well. So what we wanna do is we want to complete our card that we have here. And you'll notice on this card, we are going to uh, need one mountain and one river. And that's gonna give us five points whenever we complete that. Now, looking at the player board here, the way we're going to be able to do that traveling is uh, by assigning dice to these actions down here. This gives us two rivers. This gives us three rivers. This gives us two mountains. This will give us uh, basically uh, negotiating with the warring Indians. And you'll notice we also get one of those gray dice, but this is where we're going to be able to get one of those cards that are over there, depending on which area we place those dice. So uh, if we place here, we're going to take a warring card. If we place here, we're going to get a peaceful card, but we also get one of the gray dice there. If we place here, we're going to be able to swap that card that we have with one of the cards that we have over there in the reconnaissance area. If we place a dice here, then what we can do is we can change up to uh, two die faces in our pool. Now, when we do that, they have to both be the same face that we're changing it to. So in uh, my dice pool here, if I assign this horseshoe, then I could change, let's say this to a uh, footprint, and I could change this to a footprint as well. You'll notice that at the end of each of those travel sections, we have that script A. So that represents us writing down our, uh, basically our exploration in the journals because you know, the name of the game is the Journals of Lewis and Clark. 
So uh, in order to do that, you are going to be placing those A's and you can try to get those on the same turn so that you are generating a lot of the travel that you need. Now, in the first card that I have, I only have one mountain and one river, so I don't uh, need to really generate that much, but you can see to start off, the only way that I can generate travel on the river is uh, I get two here and three there. Well, I only need one for that card. And same, I only need one mountain, but I'm gonna generate two. You don't get change back. However, there is kind of a bonus that you can do. If you can take and complete this card, and if you can complete another card that is in the reconnaissance area, you'll notice that you can uh, set those up here. So if I can complete essentially a mountain, a river, and another mountain, then I will be able to uh, score both of these cards. And then as a bonus, I'm going to be able to take another turn. Also, whenever you complete a card, you will be able to get a new card from the reconnaissance area to place above your player board. Now those dice are going to be placed to the main player board, like I said, whenever you see those arrows. But uh, the rest of those dice that you don't have to put there are going to stay on your board until you take the, the scribe action. Then once you have completed those and you have used all that, you're going to take those dice back, you're going to re-roll them, and you're going to place them in your dice pool. Each player is going to continue to take their turns, either pulling their dice back or uh, assigning dice to their board, or uh, like I said, getting some of these other cards that are going to help them along the way. And then the timer for the end of the game is whenever basically the deck runs out up here and a player can no longer fill uh, an empty spot there, that triggers the end of the game. All the other players get one last turn and then you're gonna add up your points. Whoever has the most points wins. So that's a high level overview on how the game is set up and played. So now let's get to what dad thinks of it. So if you've been following our videos, you know that this is one of my top 10 games to play uh, during the fall of every year. Uh, this is a game that I love a lot. I really like the dice worker placement aspect. I like uh, you know, trying to get the actions in order to complete your journeys uh, doing the set collection. But maybe the most fun part of this game is when you are pulling your dice back uh, from other players. Uh, you know, They've got these dice, they're wanting to use them before you do that, and a lot of times when you are pulling them back before they are able to do that, um, a few choice words might be set around the table, but it's all in good fun. But there is that take that aspect that uh, I really enjoy. Component-wise, the player boards are nice and thick and sturdy. I think the iconography uh, for the most part, is easy to understand. This part here and some of the iconography on the uh, American Indian cards is sometimes uh, a little difficult. But I will point out that on the back of the rule book, there is a reference for what each one of those does. Uh, each one of the American Indian cards has a number, so all you have to do is look and find the number, and it tells you what that card does. So I really like the inclusion of that on the back of the book. I love these nice, chunky wooden dice. They have rounded corners. Uh, the iconography on the dice face uh, is really clear. I mean, there's no uh, question of what they are. Uh, the, Thematic-wise, it makes sense. Here, you're basically doing your hiking. Um, you know, you're writing in your book. You're uh, traveling by horseback, or you are negotiating with the American Indians. I really enjoy the art on the cards. Uh, here are the American Indian cards and your travel cards. Uh, it even has those little subtle things, you know, like your little compass, you got a hatchet there. Uh, they just, it looks really nice. The fact that you are uh, using both sides of these cards and not knowing which uh, cards you're gonna be able to get. Like I said, um, you don't know which one of those symbols you're gonna have or which one of the uh, American Indian cards you're going to be able to have uh, in order to use throughout the game. So each game is probably going to feel pretty different. I mean, gameplay-wise, you're still doing the same thing, uh, but 
you can't just adopt one specific strategy around cards because you never know which ones of those are going to come out. Now, this is a game that I have actually introduced to a lot of my friends. Um, in fact, I don't know a single person that I've taught this game to that doesn't really enjoy it. Um, Megan's not really a big fan of this. That's why this is uh, my dad only review. Um, but she also really hasn't sat down to try to play it. It's just not her thing, and that's fine. Not every game is for everybody. Um, the theme might put some people off. Uh, I really don't know why it would. Um, I think they've done a really good job of being respectful to the American Indians. And like I said, they have what they are or why they use that term in the book. And speaking of the book, one of the nice things is they actually have like uh, journal entries that were made by key players. Like here's President Jefferson's instructions. And as you go through there, you'll notice uh, in a couple of different places, like down here, here is some more information as well. And then speaking of the rule book, I think it is uh, does a really good job of laying everything out, you know, based on player count, what each uh, part of the cards do, and so forth. Uh, it's not a very big rule book because it's not a very um, difficult game to grasp. Uh, the biggest thing I think that people have an issue with is trying to do more with the dice on their turn than what they really can. Um, remember, you're only basically taking the dice that have the same face and applying those results. Some people like to, uh, oh, I want to place that and I want to do this you know, right away so that I can get those two rivers. Nope, you can't do that. That's going to take you two different turns. Um, but the nice thing is, is when you can pull off that combo and get that extra turn, uh, I think that's really cool. Uh, I played this just last night with three of my other buddies, and all four of us were able to get that bonus action at least once during the game. And like I alluded to, this is a fairly easy game. Um, I think the fact that you are rolling dice, you know, you're taking dice back, um, it's something that I think a lot of people can easily grasp the concept of. Um, I really don't know anybody that's struggled with learning how to play the game. Uh, in fact, it was funny because after we played last night, uh, one of my buddies said, hey, now that I know how to play it, you know, really well, let's play it again. So I think the game concept is easy to grasp. I think the gameplay uh, is simple enough that this is a game I think I would recommend for anyone in the family. Uh, the younger players might struggle a little bit uh, just because, of, like I said, you're only able to do one thing. Um, and they also might you know, struggle with the concept of the cards. And one thing I didn't point out was uh, whenever you are looking at these cards, you do have an option. You can go up this path, or you can go up this path, uh, depending on what you're generating. So, uh, you know, having those decisions to make based on what you can generate and travel is also another thing that I really like about the game. I did want to mention that I did used to own uh, Lewis and Clark The Expedition, um, which came out before this one. Um, I played it several times and it just did not resonate with me like Discoveries did. Um, not really sure if I just didn't like the race aspect of it. I did really favor Discoveries over the, uh, the expedition, and uh, because of that, I ended up getting rid of it. But that is pretty much all there is to Discoveries, the journals of Lewis and Clark. I give this two thumbs up. This is uh, easily a game in my top 20 uh, of all time. Eh, probably around there. Uh, but like I said, this is definitely one in my top 10. In fact, um, go check out my top 10 fall games and you'll see where this ranks. Uh, but it's pretty darn high. Um, Cause like I said, I really, really enjoy playing this game a lot. So we will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, click that like and subscribe button. You can also follow us on social media like Facebook. And Twitter at Dad Daughter. And if you like what we do and you want to support us, you can visit our Patreon page. So thanks for watching. Thanks.